so it's our pleasure to have um, Zhao Ping Sang um, today here to present his work on um, a unified framework um, for simultaneous reconstruction of T2 star mapping of accelerated seven Tesla data using the recurrent inference machine. Um, Zhao Ping did his PhD studies in Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Um, his PhD research was focused on advanced image reconstruction for accelerated MRI. Afterwards, in beginning 2020, he moved to Amsterdam, um, the University of Medical uh, Me University Medical Center as a postdoctoral researcher and worked on the fast quantitative MRI with deep learning techniques. Um, mid 21, he moved to the Netherlands Cancer Institute and is working on image reconstruction and motion compensation for 4D radial MRI, da MRI data in MRI guided radiation therapy. So, Zhao Ping, the stage is yours. Yeah, thanks for the uh, introduction. Um, yeah, let me. So can you see the screen now? I'd make the... Yes. It's a bit slow. <laughs> okay. Can you see the presentation now? Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction. So uh, indeed, this is the work that, uh, that was done in the Amsterdam University Medical Centers before I moved to the uh, Desert Cancer Institute. And it was done uh, together with my supervisor, Matan, who is also in today's audience. And it's built upon uh, his prior work of the uh, deep learning image reconstruction and uh, developed the sequence and the database acquired with the sequence. Um, so, um, so, so the title is, uh, is this a unified model for reconstruction and r mapping of uh, accelerated 70 data using the re quantitative uh, recurrent inference machine. And essentially, it is uh, uh, solving the quantitative uh, MRI or parameter mapping problem with the uh, inverse problem solver, the uh, quantitative uh, recurrent inference machine. And it is uh, validated with the uh, R2-star data. I will um, start uh, with a brief introduction to the MR reconstruction problem. So uh, we understand that we don't uh, directly acquire an uh, image of the subject from the scanner, uh, but, uh, but the case space, which is actually a, a spatial frequency in domain of the image. And we can, uh, so it is actually a Fourier transform from the uh, image. So by uh, applying an inverse free transform, we can obtain the image from the case space. And practically, um, we acquire the, the, the subject with the, uh, a multi-channel coil. And for example, this green coil, it has multiple elements. And each of them has a specific sensitivity profile to the uh, subject, and it's modeled as, as here. And uh, we know that MR is a um, timely process. So uh, commonly people subsample the case space uh, with the mask. Uh, for example, with this random mask, we only sample the uh, uh, white positions. And this is a model SP here. Um, so and, and with the uh, noise, we, we have the full model of the MR image reconstruction. And the problem is, to solve the uh, underlying uh, image X from the uh, measurement Y. And now let's uh, take a closer look at uh, how the uh, case space occurred with an example sequence. Uh, so with the uh, MR scanner, we can uh, generate a series of the radio frequency process and gradient process. We don't go into physics, but uh, we, we understand that uh, at the starting point, the uh, subject is excited and with the uh, defacing and refacing gradients, uh, it can uh, form the series of the uh, echoes. And, and this, each of these echoes is, uh, is uh, occurred as a uh, one line in the case space. And 
and then it repeats this uh, echo chain until the case space is fully sampled. And this is uh, um, how the conventional weighted imaging uh, uh, is done. So it mi makes the echoes in the one case space. Uh, but um, actually, the, uh, there is an exponential decay along the echo chain. So, um, and, and the decay is, uh, uh, is of a uh, parameter here, the relaxation parameter called the R2 star in this uh, case of the multi echo green echo sequence. And it is of a tissue property, and we are interested in this parameter in the quantitative MR. And in order to measure these parameters, uh, the quantitative MR usually acquire a case space for each of the echoes and uh, do the uh, imagery construction on, the, on it. And then uh, if we do the voxel wise fitting uh, to the uh, relaxation model here, the uh, um, decaying model, we can uh, obtain the parameter or R2 star. And so uh, the, the uh, quantitative uh, MR or the, the parameters ha have quite uh, some benefits. So because it's, uh, it's, it's uh, of the tissue property, so it's, uh, it's quite robust to the change in the uh, scan specifications and, and it is reproducible and it allows quantitative analysis. You can uh, compare the uh, parameters over uh, between the subjects or scanners or even between hospitals. So uh, that's nice. And it, it can also benefit longitudinal monitoring and the classification of the disease processes. But the uh, problem, the challenge is uh, as a conventional MR, it's already slow. And for the quantitative MR, if we acquire multiple times the uh, multiple case pages, it is uh, even slower. So, so, it's, uh, so we have to subsample, we have to accelerate it. And the, uh, uh, so the common way is, uh, is uh, subsampling as, we, as I introduced. And so by uh, directly inverse Fourier transform this uh, subsampled case space, and we can expect quite uh, strongly alias image. Um, but uh, currently there are quite a lot of uh, excellent rec image reconstruction uh, methods. And so uh, they can still um, reconstruct kind of fine image for, from this uh, severely subsampled uh, case space. Uh, for example, with the recurrent inference machine network, or there are also other uh, quite uh, nice deep learning based uh, uh, method as well. And then uh, we can still fit the uh, model with these images and get to find uh, R2 star map. And in this, in this project, what we want to do is to explore the uh, um, uni unification of the uh, imagery construction process and the uh, relax and the voxel wise fitting of the uh, parameter maps and to reconstruct the uh, parameter map with the case based data and to summarize this uh, this uh, pathway a bit in this figure so the conventional way is to sample the case space for each of the uh, echo times and then do the individual image reconstruction and the voxel wide fitting of the relaxation model, then we can get the uh, parameters, parameter map. And what we want to explore is to unify the reconstruction and parameter fitting and to uh, compute the R2 star map from the uh, subsampled case basis. And um, so to formulate a bit, the, this is actually a inverse problem of mapping the case based measurements to the relaxation parameters. And for model, uh, we understand that the physics, from the physics, the relaxation uh, process is, uh, is, is at this. So, so it's um, mapped the, from the parameters to the image of the uh, echo time, TE. And the, uh, this is the, for the model of the image reconstruction. And as I introduced before, 
So substituting this XC into the right side, we can uh, obtain the unified photo model. And um, this problem can be solved with the uh, MAP estimator. And it is by so maximizing the log likelihood and the log prior of the uh, parameters. And so given the forward model, the log likelihood can be derived and this formula is uh, basically the data consistency and assuming the Gaussian noise, it's, this is noise level. And the log, log prior is uh, subject to model design. So uh, commonly in compress sensing, it is uh, modeled as sparsity in a sparse flying domain, for example, wavelength transform or total variation. And for deep learning, it can learn this from the training data with network. And there is an iterative approach to this uh, MAP inference. So it is iteratively updating the uh, estimation of the current time step the uh, parameters. And this is the uh, step size and this is a gradient of the uh, log likelihood and log prior to the parameter. And with the uh, learnable inference model, we can generate, we, we generate this as, uh, as this uh, question. So uh, we, instead of uh, explicitly formulate the prior, we learn it with the uh, parameters in the G5. And the step size is, uh, is often uh, a predefined uh, schedule or, um, or subject to some uh, pre-deterministic uh, uh, algorithm. So we also want to learn it with the uh, learnable inference model. And we explicitly keep the uh, log likelihood uh, here because it's, it has um, uh, external physics information uh, and it's, it can provide uh, uh, um, nice feedback on uh, how well the, uh, the current estimation can reproduce the uh, measurements. So, um, and uh, then we enjoy this uh, uh, inference in a time dimension and we can uh, try to approximate this uh, learnable inference model as a uh, recurrent neural network. And so to, uh, to add here to a uh, framework of uh, recurrent net neural network, we add a uh, internal, so hidden uh, memory state S here. And so uh, this basically is architecture of the, uh, that we, we used for this problem. Uh, so this network accepts the uh, current uh, time step estimation of phi, and these two are the uh, log likelihood to the parameters. So sorry, the gradient of the log likelihood to the parameters, and and also the uh, hidden states uh, memory uh, memory states, and the memory state is updated with the with the network, of course, and it's uh, initialized and zero, and it's pro produced the updates to the uh, estimation and as, uh, as uh, stated in this equation. And so now we summarize a bit the uh, QRIM network. It learns a prior, actually a log prior from data, and it has four model included in the uh, log likelihoods, and it, it is, efficient by reducing the uh, network parameters over multiple time steps and solve the inverse problem dynamically over the time steps. And in this implementation, this network is with uh, 376 key parameters. And now it's, uh, uh, we have to um, solve the uh, initialization of these uh, parameters. So the, the phi zero, and we do it like this. So first we start from the subsampled case space. We do a, we train a recurrent inference machine for image reconstruction purpose and do the reconstruction individually for the case space. And then we do the discourse fitting 
over these images to get a uh, fitted parameter map. And this this is the the map that we used as the uh, input of the network, the phi zero. So uh, to validate this this uh, method, we did the experiment. Um, we use four echo times with the multi echo gradient echo sequence, uh, which is actually a second part of the uh, MP regime uh, sequence. And we, we did test on the uh, 2D slices and the 2D case space was retrospectively subsampled with uh, uh, factors three, six, nine, and 12. And each for each factor, we train a different uh, a separate model. We don't mix them. And the subsampling patterns differ among the uh, echo times. Um, this is an effort to explore complementary information. And for the database, we have uh, training data for seven, we have uh, 17 subjects for training and two for validation and 10 for testing. Each of them contains 50 axial slices uh, in the center part of the uh, brain. Um, the ground truth was computed as the weighted, the least square fitting with the fully sampled image. And we compute loss at the uh, structural similarity index in the brain region. And it is weighted some of the uh, different parameters. And we give a uh, three times higher weight to the R2 star map uh, over the uh, M and uh, B naught map because R2 star map is, uh, is of more, more of uh, our interest. And then uh, it's the uh, average of over the time steps. Um, we do it in the brain region only because um, because there is, uh, so if we want to fit the uh, B naught map, we need the phase of the images. And the phase, there is a phase wrapping uh, over the uh, uh, neighboring echoes. And the wrapping is pretty random outside the brain. So we are not able to obtain the uh, one choose B naught map. So that's why we did the uh, training in the brain region for, for the loss computation. And this is the number of the recurrent time steps. And so um, it is um, basically of the limit to basically to the limit of the uh, mem GPU memory. So, um, and we did a comparison to several methods. The first one is the classical non learning, non deep learning method, the compressed sensing image reconstruction, uh, we use the BART toolbox, and then we do least square fitting on the, the uh, compression sensing images. And the, uh, we use the L1 norm of the wavelet coefficient with the factor 0.01, that is uh, tuned to achieve the best performance. And second one is a, a unit model, and it has same architecture as the, uh, as the original, Unit paper, um, but we we made it so for input output channels to fit our application. We have four maps to um, estimate, and third one is the is the uh, rim image reconstruction plus LSQ. That is the initialization of the QRIM, and it is more like the conventional sequential image reconstruction and parameter uh, estimation, and then. Uh, we compute the average root mean square error over all slices for each testing subject for evaluation. And this shows- Sorry, sorry. Yeah. can I ask something quick? Sure, sure. Um, so did I understand it correctly? Are you uh, only fitting the R2 star or also the B naught and the M as well? Yeah, we, we fit uh, all of them. And, and uh, what do you use uh, as the ground truth for those to train network? Okay, um, yeah. Um, so it is, uh, we have fully sampled the image. So the, the reference image, we, we did the least square fitting from these images as uh, we act that as the uh, ground truth. So it, do you do the uh, least squares fitting to get the R2 star? 
Yeah. Um, and then B naught you have measured separately and M? Uh, no, actually, for B naught and M, they are also fitted from the uh, ah, images. Okay. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. And okay. and it, it 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 is quite kind of required to to uh, uh, have this or estimate it for our method because we because we uh, estimate the uh, we use the log likelihood the gradient of log likelihood that uses uh, other maps as input as well. So that that is uh, usually not provided. So we we do that that out estimation as well. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Uh, so this is uh, the result of the QRIM network, and um, we can basically see the R two star um, is is expected. The M also has expected magnitude and phase, and the B not map is uh, also has expect, expected uh, uh, pattern of the re of resonance in the brain region. And we also see this stable uh, parameter phase you know, for all the uh, tested exception factors. And this is a comparison for our methods. Um, it shows one slice of a subject and looks complicated, but the rows are exception factors and the columns are different uh, comparison methods. And the grayscale image is the uh, R2 star uh, parameter map. And the color scale images are the difference with the uh, reference image. So uh, basically, the unit is, uh, has quite a high difference. And CS plus LSQ also has a um, higher difference than the, uh, the rest two methods. And for the rest two method, it's it's very similar when the acceleration factor is uh, is smaller, but it's uh, when when it becomes high, higher, it's uh, the difference of the rim plus LSQ is a little bit higher. There are some zoomed in region, but we will uh, look at the, them later uh, with the larger image. And this uh, the root mean square. Uh, of these uh, data methods, and each each plot is uh, is uh, is for one uh, subject or one testing subject, and basically the CS plus LSQ has the highest uh, root mean square error, and the uh, the RIM plus LSQ and the Q RIM have have basically the uh, lowest uh, root mean square error compared to the other two, and so uh, next slide, we want to zoom in a bit the comparison between the uh, RIM plus LSQ and uh, QRIM. And we can uh, see actually a, a, a difference uh, between these two and it's, uh, the difference is, uh, is uh, higher. And that means the uh, uh, reduction of the uh, root mean square error and the uh, it, it increases with the exception factors, and that is uh, statistically uh, significant. And this, from this image, we want to make a bit visual comparison. And uh, basically, with the factor of 12, we see uh, indeed a bit more image details in the QRIM than the RIM plus ALSQ. And for factor nine, it's uh, it's similar, and six and three, it, it can still see a little bit more details in the Q ring. And until now, it's uh, uh, it, it is uh, the comparison in the uh, uh, whole image scale. And for R two star, it's uh, it's kind of interesting to see um, how it performs in a some specific region of interest in the subcortex, and that can uh, directly link to the uh, clinical sites, for example, the deep neural simulation. And we, we did the, in the three regions, five regions of interest, the, uh, we calculate the distribution 
over the subject, the mean and the standard deviation of the uh, errors in this region of interest. And so um, can we say that units basically uh, underestimates the R2 star always and the uh, it's it's very different the uh, the uh, um, the the it it's uh, the underestimation is uh, it's varying quite uh, quite a lot and that can uh, indicate possibly the overfitting and the uh, curing basically has the uh, most accurate uh, reconstruction and from the standard deviation. Of the R2 star, the uh, CS plus AIS curve has the uh, highest uh, standard deviation, so it's uh, quite low in precision compared to others. And then, uh, in so we come to discussion, and the curing using a unified form model for reconstruction and parameter estimation achieves reduced root mean square error while showing improved image sharpness compared to the comparison methods. And the contributing factors can be uh, the, relax the unified R2 star relaxation model. Uh, it can uh, provide additional prior information um, for the whole process. And the, this curing network allows learning a spatial correlation with, within the receptive fields this is a compared to the uh, voxel-wise fitting. And so initialized with the uh, RIM plus LSQ, the QRIM actually, I think effectively it has more iterations and capacity to learn. And the improvement increases with the exception factor. And one limitation is that we need the uh, brain mask for, for computing the loss in the training stage and in testing stage is not needed. And in the as future direction, it can be uh, very interesting to, to see how, uh, if we in integrate the motion model in the photo model, uh, can we make some progress, like improvement further because the motion is a, is a major source of the artifacts in MR and in Q, Quantitative MR, it's a, it's a quite long process, and it it's inevitably has a has some motion in the <clears throat> scan process, and it's it's also interesting to 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 see how how this R two star map can be applied in clinic, of course, and it's it's also not limited to other sequences and other parameter map estimation, so that that can be a uh, interesting to explore in future, and. Here, I would like to thank my co-authors and the collaborators and the funding organization. And thank you for your time. Any questions? Thanks very much. I have some questions, maybe more clinical. Mm. Um, so you scanned on the um, seven Tesla scanner. Yeah. The seven Tesla scanner has usually a lot of artifacts when you scan, for example, a patient with um, hemorrhages or with calcifications in the brain. How does your, um, did, did, you, did you test this on, on, on your method as well? Were the images, for example, better than the real images or? Um, yeah, I think the, uh, uh, so, so indeed it's, uh, so it, it needs a bit uh, better shimming and uh, uh, the the B not map is uh, is 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 a bit more important, and mm -hmm. I think the R two star map can also reflect a bit the uh, the hemorrhage and the iron uh, deposition. Uh, yeah. So, but but uh, what's your? Uh, yeah, no. Sometimes uh, like when you do a brain image, you get this very big artifact because of calcifications in the brain, even okay. if you do shimming or so. And maybe with your method, this is also going to um, disappear or it maybe improve the images or something like that. Um, I don't know. Did you, did you test any of those? Would be maybe also interesting to try or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, maybe Matan can uh, answer this one because, uh, because he uh, acquired data, I think. 
and this is sequence that's the heat web. And okay, yeah, uh, yeah. I also did a lot of uh, T2 star imaging or R2 star imaging myself, but also mm -hmm. in the liver, for example. Mm -hmm. And then liver, oh, okay. you, have, you have lots of motion, of course. I mean, yeah, it would be very interesting to have see your motion model, how it works there. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then uh, it need to be. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it's not that easy, I would say. No, of course not. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a non-rigid. Uh, yes, the liver is terrible. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you for your presentation, Elise. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Can I ask another question? Sure. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for the nice talk first. Um, uh, so you, in your data set, do you always have the same echo times or do they vary throughout the scans? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, they are always the same. So they have an interval of the 8.5 milliseconds. And See. so so basically the uh, the protocol is fixed over all subjects. Yeah. I see. And does this imply that there is a dependency of your learned prior on these echo times and TR times and so on? So if I were to change these sequence parameters, would there be a degradation in the performance? Or? Yeah, very nice question. I I think so. Um, so, so that is basically uh, a question of the uh, how, how the model can generalize over different data sets, and I I think the uh, for specific so for R two star map the underlying R two star map shouldn't be a uh, very different as long as the uh, uh, magnetic field is fixed, and so 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 in that sense. Um, the model can can learn the uh, R two star map. It's and it's not varying over different echo times. Um, so so in so in that sense, I think we can uh, expect a bit uh, better generalization ability over different echo times. But for the model design, uh, uh, we have a uh, log likelihood. Okay, that's 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 also possible to extend it with uh, echo times. Yeah, so um, I would expect it to be uh, uh, to be uh, not bad in generalized over different uh, echo times, but for for different uh, parameter maps, it can uh, it has to be uh, tested. I mean, uh, then the image is different and the model learns differently. I see. Yeah. So if you change the contrast, so if yeah, you don't yeah. do for R two star, but if you fix yeah. something else, yeah. And also the matrix size is that variable or? Uh -huh. um, yeah, it is. Uh, it is a convolutional network, so uh, I think it can accept different uh, matrix size. But uh, for for our training, we have to input the full image as the input. Otherwise, we are not able to uh, create the case space with patch. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. I would also have a quick understanding question, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, in your equation for the um, in the forward model, basically, so the equation for x p on this slide, I think it is in. Um, yeah, uh, is this this one? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess the i is imaginary unit, or what? Um, yeah, indeed. So do the units? No, I'm I'm just a bit confused with your model here. So the r two star times t e sort of makes sense. It's a relaxation because mm -hmm. of r two star, and then the other one is the. This is the off resonance of the, yeah. It's uh, off resonance. Yeah. So, okay. is it yeah. possible that there's sort of a gyromagnetic ratio missing or something? Because uh, uh, D not yeah. is of units Tesla and R2 star is of units seconds. Uh, yeah, it is uh, one over the uh, time. Yeah. 
relaxation time here. So. Okay, okay. No, but I think I get it. So the B not sort of models the. Um, yeah. The uh, the off resonance. Yeah, um, indeed. Because it's a, it's a gradient echo, and for spin echo, it would be better um, on the resonance. Yeah. And yeah, uh, actually, um, the the M is also complex, and we we actually estimate the R two star and B not as as one complex number instead of uh, doing it uh, for two real numbers because the for for calculating the uh, gradients, it's uh, it's easier to do this way. I see. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And then yes. the other one, maybe um, you. So in this multi echo sequence, I guess you um, excite once, and then you have multiple echoes, as the name says. So does that mean that for the undersampling? The undersampling mm -hmm. mask is the same for all echo images. Is that true? Um, the mask is uh, always uh, identical for, uh, for, 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 for um, one echo in the echo chain. Uh, so, so it's different between the echoes in one echo chain, but it's the same uh, in the echo uh, chain direction. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, yeah, it's it's always the same in this uh, direction. Yeah, in, in dimension of the echo chain, but it's uh, different over this the echoes. I see. Yeah. That might actually be one um, big source of information for the reconstruction because different echo images sort of have different undersampling masks. Yeah, and that's that's useful for reconstruction, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we think so. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, we hope to have a complement this is shared information. So yeah. Thanks a lot. Are there any other questions? I have maybe one last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Um, which is, I guess, about this um, recurrent inference um, machine, because I'm not super familiar with this, but mm -hmm. it reminded me of this. Um, I mean, it's similar in spirit, I guess, to this unrolled networks yeah um, but as i if i understood it correctly the main the main difference is that in this cascaded networks there's different different blocks of cnns between one step and here you share the parameters i guess is that yeah the main um, thing or can you comment on more yeah i i think so yeah th there are actually several these these on roads uh, uh optimization networks. So indeed, some of them, they, they don't share the parameters. Some of them, they share. So both, both of the both of sides, they, they are, there are several. Yeah, I, I think we, are, we also did the test with uh, on shared parameters. And it can even uh, improve uh, a bit more further based on this. But but it's uh, it's uh, it's also um, affected by the amount of data, and with with the sharing uh, parameters, it is probably uh, better in the uh, generalization ability. Yeah, and this is quite uh, I think it's a quite nice uh, small network. The the baseline unit has uh, uh, like twenty times more the tunable parameters, yeah. And especially since it's hard to get quantitative data, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again for this very nice talk.
Thanks. Thanks for your questions. I think if there's no more questions, then we can end this session. Or do you have any burning desire to ask questions? No. Mm -hmm. All right. Then thank you very much. And bye bye. Thank you very Thanks. much.